So we now have learned enough to start thinking about the different circuit elements. The there's basically three fundamental circuit elements. The first one we're going to talk about is the capacitor. The capacitor is basically a pair of charged conductors. Here's an example of what a capacitor might look like. Here's one we're going to do demos with. It's two uh, metal plates. So in this case, the conductor is, of course, a metal, which it usually is in circuits. And we've gone with two close parallel plates. So let's draw that and see what's going to happen inside of it. Two metal plates. And um, we want them to be large and close. And you'll see why in a minute. Let's go ahead and draw them. So one metal plate is here, like this. And it's a metal, I'll shade it in. And the other one is very close to it, like that. Like that. And we're going to apply a charge to these plates, Q. But the key with the capacitor is it's oppositely charged. So one plate has plus Q, and one plate has minus Q. So I'll just put plus and minus Q there. So you want to make sure you get this. If you think of the entire capacitor, it's neutral. If you say a capacitor has charge Q, well, each plate has charge Q. So the total excess charge, in a sense, the magnitude is 2Q, right? There's Q on each plate, but of the opposite amount. So when you say a capacitor has charge Q, that doesn't mean each plate has a half Q. Okay, each one has Q. It's just one is positive and one is negative. So what we want to do is look in and see what's going to happen in the gap when we have that charge Q on each plate. So we'll kind of zoom in here and look like this and get a good look at each plate. So there's the plates. And this was the positive one, so it'll have some positive charge at its surface. We know conductors like to have all their charge run to their surface. Let's see, so we know that this plane is going to make a field that way, and that's why we like two large and metal plates that are really close. Is in this gap, we want to be so close to the surface that it basically looks like an infinite plane. Okay? So if that's the case, we know these positive charges are going to make a field that goes that way. And these negative charges are also a plane. They're going to make a field that goes that way as well. Those fields are just going to add. And what you'll get is uh, the charge creates a uniform E field in the gap. Right? What you'll also see is that if you think about equipotential surfaces, one will always be on the surface of the metal, and then there would be another one here that's always at right angles to the electric field, and another one here, and another one here, and another one here, and then eventually you'd be at the surface of the negatively charged metal. So the charge creates uniform E through the gap, and uh, it creates a flat equipotential surfaces. And a voltage drop, delta V. So if this potential lines are dropping, then you have some potential here, you have some potential here, and between them, you have a delta V. If I were measuring it, I would measure a positive on this side and negative on that side. So inside these two plates, this is what's going on. Now, what is the capacitance then? So the capacitance, a capacitor is a pair of charged conductors. But the capacitance equals big C, and we define it to be Q, the magnitude of the charge on each plate, over delta V. So in that sense, it's how much voltage builds up when you put on a certain amount of charge. It's just the ratio. It's the charge per volt. So the unit of capacitance is the Coulomb per volt, which has a special name after the world's greatest scientist, a farad. So just usually use capital F, but the full name 
of the unit as a farad. That's the MKS unit, the same as a coulomb per volt. So you can think of it this way, as you put on charge, how much voltage do you get in this situation? But there's another way to think of it that's a little bit more like the application. So I also would say, think of it the other way. Okay, now think backwards, because when you think of an actual device, you want to go the other direction, is you apply a potential difference across the plates and it holds a charge. Okay. How much? How much charge do you get? Well, it's really the same formula. The charge you get is that Q, the charge you get, is the capacitance times delta V. So it's no different. It's really the same idea. It's just usually in a circuit, you apply voltages to things and you see what happens. So the capacitor, you apply voltage, this is how much charge you would get. So really, uh, the capacitor, capacitance, is the capacity to hold charge. 